you first. Yes. Welcome, everyone, to this uh, second talk of this session on uh, Python tools and OGC standards. So for the second talk, uh, Tom Kreditis and Paul Van Hunuchen, if I didn't destroy your name too much, are going to talk about uh, the PyGeo API, which implements the new OGC API. Uh, so I guess I'll just let you go. OK, thank you, Daniel. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Um, so we'll try to get through this as fast as we can. Uh, there's a bunch of content in this slide set. We're going to skip a couple of sections in the interest of time, but the presentation is online. If you go to pygeoapi.io, there's a link called presentation, so you can sort of look at this on a Friday night and, and look at it in full. Um, I know, eh? <laughs> so uh, at any rate, um, we'll walk through uh, uh, a few different sections. Paul will start off with some of the OGC activity, and then I'll talk a little bit about the actual project and uh, features and, and, and so on. So Paul and I are, are, are presenting. There's, a, there's other developers in the room. So Just Vandenbroek is, uh, is, is, is mainly contributing on, a, he's done a lot of the OGR sort of backends. And then Angelos, who most of you know, uh, works on a lot of the packaging and deployment side of the, uh, of the project. So we're happy to have both of them here. So if you have any questions with regards to that stuff, they're your, uh, they're your people and they're core contributors to the project. So I'll move it over to Paul to start us off. Down? Which down? Not this, not the other one. OK, good. So let me start with a, with a question. Who read this document? Who of you has read this document? That's too little, huh? This is, this is a... A very disturbing uh, document for our community. We're not we're not used to the terminology in this document. So this this document was created in 2017 in a joint uh, OGC uh, working group of uh, of uh, OGC and W3C. And uh, so a lot of uh, people from from the web world, search engines, uh, linked data, uh, came together with people from OGC and and the spatial domain to say, hey. We're disconnected, but how, how can we reorganize this so, so we will be uh, connected? So this, this document is based on uh, data best practices on, on the web, which is also a very re recommended read. Um, so based on that document, some new movements started within the OGC, and uh, all, all working groups uh, were, of course, reading the document. and, and um, that document and that led to kind of new design patterns within that world. So, so being webby uh, was like mentioned in all OGC meetings. Being developer friendly, having a lightweight specifications for development, um, removing HTTP tunnel, uh, and and moving into uh, APIs uh, uh, URLs like this instead of the long uh, key value pairs. Um, idea was to, to, to start with uh, a small uh, uh, standards and then develop plugins and, and extensions on top of that. Um, so the, uh, this was a kind of the recent years that we had. So it's very hackathon oriented, as you see. Um, uh, it started with this document, special data on the web. And then there was a white paper. And then there was uh, a hackathon in, in 2018 where some of this, what we are presenting, was born, but probably it was born in your head before that. No comment. No comment, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, this year we had a, a continuation of that hackathon with a lot of progress. And in between, of course, there was a lot of discussion and on Gitter and on the various channels. And uh, so we'll be presenting some of that outcomes. There's more? <laughs> ah, yeah, there's more. <laughs> So here we're talking mostly about OGC features, previously known as WFS3. Um, and, uh, but 
so so we started out with WFS3, but at, at some point um, uh, this led to an, uh, OGC uh, had a similar uh, parallel uh, discussion that, that led to this OGC, OGC API common specification. And that one required that all those new APIs would be called OGC API something. So then we had to rename WFS3 to OGC API features. Um, coverage is coming, maps, tiles, uh, processing records, so that will, in, in, in the beginning, will start to live next to the other ones. Who knows, at some point we'll replace that. Um, very OGC, uh, very GitHub oriented, very open, Gitter, uh, Webby. So you can create issues and, and pull requests on, on GitHub even without being an OGC member for most of the uh, standards. Uh, written in ASCII doc and released as HTML documents. So it's very, uh, even the standardization process itself is very webby. That's it. Thanks, Paul. So yeah, everything you saw um, you, know, you can believe what you see. This is really happening. Things are uh, really changing in, in OGC, and it's getting a lot easier to um, either make servers or clients or web applications using this new generation of, uh, of OGC standards. So we'll give you uh, an overview of the, of, of the project itself. Um, I look back on the commits, and the first commit was on Valentine's Day last year. And yeah, my wife wasn't happy about that. <laughs> but... Uh, I have to buy her something on the way home. So it's a, we like to think of it as a geo, geospatial data API framework, um, which you can put any kind of web front end uh, or, 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 or RESTful front end API front end on top of it. It's already OGC compliant. So as part of working in these hackathons that Paul mentioned before, we are working with, uh, with OGC and also the, uh, the site team um, in uh, neck and neck, if you will. So uh, there, the, the site tests for, for WFS3, which is the first standard that PyGeo API officially implements, have been really helpful for us to cross the line in terms of being fully compliant. We're already an OSGO community project which, is, uh, which we find valuable to be part of the, uh, the OSGO ecosystem. And there's a bunch of different people from all sorts of time zones. So uh, the time and date meeting planner is a very valuable tool in our, uh, in our team. So there's a lot of contributors. And uh, you can see we stand on the shoulders of a, of a heck of a lot of tools and people that have contributed. The, te the technical overview is it's a core abstract API, so you can actually use PyGeo API on the command line to interact with your data using uh, the, the web front end is just an extra layer on top. So that was by design, that didn't happen by, an ac by accident. The con there's a server configuration where you can define server service metadata, layer connections and so on, that's in YAML. Um, with regards to supporting open API, we generate the open API document uh, before we deploy a server. So if you have an open API doc, uh, or if you have the configuration and you have uh, five or six different layers, if you will, or data sets, the, uh, the open API document generator will go through each of those data sets, pick up all the fields, what their uh, data types are, and make them part of the open API document. So you can know exactly what the fields are in every record and how you can query them and so on. Um, we have a really, really robust and powerful plugin framework. So we have a framework which allows you to create a plugin, any kind of plugin, and basically uh, extend as you wish. So we have plugins for data connections. So as I mentioned, um, Juiced worked on a, uh, an, OGC, an OGR plugin, which basically opens the door to a whole multitude of formats. I wrote the Elasticsearch plugin for the back end, and uh, 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 George, I think Vroti, who's, who's not here, but he's part of this project, he implemented, uh, I think, the, the Spatial Light and a few other ones as well. Um, we also have plugins for formats. So the default output is, uh, is GeoJSON and HTML. That's sort of core. We also have a plugin for CSV output. So if you want uh, the data as CSV, so you can think up any format you wish and, uh, and work with it as, as you wish. It's easy to deploy. Um, I'm not sure how, how long the install takes. We'll need, a, we'll need to time that as well. 
but you can do it through pip or, or, or docker um, it's on uh, it's on the Ubuntu GIS unstable uh, line now thanks to Angelos and it has min minimal dependencies so it can get really simple or if you need to install more complex dependencies you can do that as well but the idea is following the design pattern of what's going on at OGC which is core and extension so it shouldn't take you very long to stand up a basic um, um, PyGeo API to serve out your features in accordance to the, the core spec. There's a, a graphical overview of what, uh, of what we just described. There's a different data providers as I was mentioning. Oops. So as we mentioned, uh, Juice worked on the, uh, the OGR Python binding, so that opens the door to all sorts of different formats. So uh, that makes it really flexible. We also, there, there's also the capability to use it as a proxy for your existing WFS 1 and, and 2 instances. So uh, you know, don't feel so bad if you have them. If you do need to expose them as WFS 3 or OGC API features, you can just plug them in this way. It's also easy to deploy. So as I mentioned, there's Ubuntu GIS. We're working on including it in the OSGO Live package, which uh, some of you uh, may have heard about. Obviously, we have Docker support. And it's very easy to, uh, uh, to download the images and, and run them. There are some, uh, some examples there. So there's, there's uh, after running the Docker, you can see test. Those are WFS3 commands, basically. So as you can see, very straightforward to, uh, to, to interact with a feature server now compared to what it, what it used to be. And that's by virtue of the spec. So here we can see an example of, uh, of some HTML encoding. So as I mentioned, the spec has HTML as a core, uh, a core output. And um, thanks to uh, Paul and others, schema.org has been, has been in, uh, implemented to facilitate uh, search engines. So now you can go on Google Dataset Search and uh, scrape through a, an OGC API feature. So again, webby, uh, lower barrier, web developer friendly, all lowering the barrier to extend the reach of the data. More Docker. Which, al which allows you to sort of scale things out as you wish, as you can imagine that you can do with, with Docker. So we already have some production instances. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the one that I work on. So as part of the uh, as of Meteorological Service of Canada, we have a platform called Geomet, which is all of our geospatial uh, web services. So we include data on uh, real-time weather, uh, climate, and water data. So we implemented, uh, we deployed PyGeo API as part of one of our climate is one of our climate services projects. So it exposes all the uh, Canadian historical uh, hydrometric and climate archives right to uh, you know 150 years back, uh, kind of thing. And you can hit that URL and interact with uh, with the WFS3 and get you know a time series for entire station of uh, hydrometric data, water levels, all the way back to throughout its lifetime. So. There's also something called uh, the Global Soil Information System, which George and, uh, and, 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 and Lewis worked on, are working on. That's part of uh, uh, ISRIC. So they're using PyGeo API as well for, their, uh, for disseminating their data through, through features. And they've done some really neat work, if you go to that URL there, with, uh, with JSON linked data. So you're able to uh, open up a, a feature and see its relations and so on and so forth. So really uh, uh, innovative and, and interesting way of, imp of implementing the OGC API spec through PyGeo API. So where do we go from here? So the, this project is uh, you know, a year and a half old or so. It had a lot of, it, it, it had and has a lot of energy. And I'm happy to see all the people in the room. Um, from, from concept, from the, the initial thinking to having something on the web, it, it took us maybe three days, which is um, really thanks to the, the simplicity and the straightforwardness of the new OGC specification. So again, I can't say enough about the new OGC, the new OGC API efforts. So I, 
um, encourage you all to take a look at those and, and follow those, and that's basically going to be the future of, uh, of standards-based geospatial information exchange. Uh, as a result, it was very easy for us to, uh, to initially uh, do an implementation. So obviously, uh, we have plans to add more data providers, so more uh, back-ends, uh, if, you, if you will. Content negotiation, so I mentioned that you can get uh, features in GeoJSON or HTML. Um, we're looking at adding uh, responses to provide a geo package or, uh, or, or, or other formats. In the OGC, we're working on an advanced uh, filter specification as part of the new program. So the PyGeo API project is, is, is following that to see what the filtering capability is going to be. It's going to get a lot simpler than the OGC filter XML that some of us have been uh, uh, working with, for better or for worse. Somebody's laughed. That's you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> So some of us are showing the, the pain of working with that, but at least we can laugh about it now. Um, and, more, and more API. So like, like we said, the, the, the OGC API effort is spanning all the different types of specifications, maps, tiles, processes, coverages, and so on. So our, our goal is to try to implement as much of them as possible and to have somebody deploy a PyGeo API instance and load it with coverages, features, and spit them out in a really easy uh, search engine, web developer friendly way. Support. So there's a number of, diff of different uh, support mechanisms. Um, obviously we have uh, folks like Geocat who are, uh, who, are, who are helpful and have been participating on the project, which is more than appreciated. Um, there's also uh, Juiced, who we, uh, who we referred to before, um, Angelos, so there's a number of different support mechanisms if you need uh, development or, or deployment uh, support. Here's some links, so uh, basically everything's there. Take a look at uh, what you will. If you have any questions, there's a, a mailing list as well as a Gitter channel. There's an online demonstration. That's pretty much it. So I'd like to thank um, all of you for coming. I'd like to thank everybody that's contributed to the project. Um, this is, again, as I mentioned this morning, the new wave of OGC and the, the, the interaction with OSGEO. Is, is, uh, it's a good sort of synergy, and we're happy to be involved. And exciting times are ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Paul. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions, so we'll start with, with you, Mike. Do you know what the first few planned extensions are going to be? The, they are talking about the, the query extension, mm -hmm. so they need to define a, uh, a query predicate language. Is that the first one? That's one that's being actively worked on, and there's an OGC activity, a hackathon in November. So that's one of the extensions that they're talking about, that I know of anyway. Will you be able to uh, support the old uh, CSW and the new one uh, against the same data provider? Um, l l yeah. That's a good question. So for, for something like WFS, we do have a wrapper, which allows Oh, the catalog only? I think the catalog only, um, this will have, a, well, initially we're going with catalog four, but we can implement something that basically proxies to, uh, to a previous version of the catalog too, so that's possible as well. Other questions? Up. Oh. And I'll go ne there next. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, at the moment, uh, will it be easy to import the PyGeo API into existing Django application and publish the API as a Django view? Good question. So the way, the way it works now is there's a, uh, there's a sort of a Python API, and then on top we have Flask on top of that. The Flask implements basically the endpoints, which are really small roots, and sends it over to Py the uh, the PyGeo API API. So you can just build a, uh, a Django view on top of that, which is very minimal. All you have to do is define the roots, which are very simple and very minimal. So in around 100 lines, you can put a Django front end, and then you can hook it in that way. Yeah. 
Yeah, please contribute. Yeah, thank you. Uh, about the WMS uh, uh, protocol, uh, do you plan to let uh, different rendering uh, engines to to develop plugins uh, to to act uh, as a rendering uh, machine, or do you intend to to implement your own rendering tool because there are QGIS, GeoServer, and uh, and so on? That's a good question. We're still a lot of good questions. We're still sort of thinking through that. Like on the Python side, um, like you say, there's a lot of different rendering engines out there that we can use. So how that actually looks uh, is to be determined. But I mean, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. If there's something that we can just build off of, then we're just going to use that. So, but we're also waiting on the OGC maps and tiles to evolve and see what that looks like. So. Anyone else? Yep. Uh, yeah, you said you had a you have an Elasticsearch backend. Is there any plans to have, um, implement a PostGIS backend? Sorry, I neglected to mention that there is a PostGIS backend. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I hadn't seen it on the list. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. George is going to kill me. Uh, he he implemented it. Yeah. So there's a PostGIS backend. Okay. Actually, there's a Postgres, and then there's a Postgres plus Postgis combination. Anyone else? Well, thank you, everyone, for coming, for joining, for having a... It, there's, there's definitely interest for that type of stuff, as you can tell from the room. So the next talk... Thanks. Thank you.